Sarah Joy, and today I want to take you through one of my favorite designs that I got to do. It is a coffee shop slash bookstore, and it's a redesign of something that was at our church. And so, first of all, we're gonna go back in time and check out what the room was like before and just see the bones of it. Really, they were still doing a bookstore, but just going off of the temporary stuff that we had. And so it was time to come in and make it feel really permanent. So you'll notice what it was like before and then I'll take you through some of the design ideas that I had and then we'll see how it turned out. Okay, let's get into it. redesigns because I feel like I'm good at taking what is already there and switching it up. So what I did is I just stood in the room and just tried to figure out how can we take advantage of what we already have. We have really, really high ceilings, so how can we emphasize those? And then how can we make the room feel like it has a bunch of private meeting spaces or nooks or places to gather and not get just I guess overwhelmed in the big room. So one of my favorite places to go as a kid was Barnes & Noble, um, the kids section of the bookstore. There's like a little reading area, I guess, and there was wood floors and there was like a little step up where there was a pretend stage um, where you got to like read your books or whatever. And I always really liked that. So when I was thinking about a bookstore, I kind of went back to those memories um, and thought about that little area. So that kind of led into, yes, we're definitely gonna do wood floors. Obviously, because we're gonna have coffee, um, so you don't wanna be spilling that around on carpet or anything, but um, just the idea of having like a little nook area where you're gonna take a step and be separate from people, um, even in that way, and just have a space to read. So that's the inspiration I drew from there. Also, we just needed some storage, so that's where all the cabinets came into play and I just thought the higher up they can go the more they can emphasize these really tall walls that we have here and then I was just thinking for the rest of it walk around bookshelves I wasn't seeing anything on the market that was what I was looking for I guess not as tall as I wanted and um, just not as classy I guess as I wanted it to be so we ended up going with some custom bookshelves so we had a carpentry team come out and um, do some work and so that is where we'll pick up next. What's up? So it's our day one of the project here and we ripped out the carpet, so that's super exciting. And you can see we have like a primer down on the floor. That's the first step to leveling out all the ridges and the glue marks. So we start building tomorrow and I'm pretty pumped. Enjoy the empty room, more to come. All right. Day two of the project, we have carpet out, we have saws in. We're about to get started on the first built in. favorite parts of a project is picking out the color scheme. So going through um, wood tile samples and going through paint chips is right up my alley. So what we went with for this room um, was a very versatile, in my opinion, floor color that could just tie in a lot of different 
wood pieces nicely. I think it had a lot of colors in it that would work with whatever tables that I picked or um, any other wood accents that I put in the room. And then the colors that I went with for the wall and the built-ins, I just tried to take the colors that were already in the church, so the, the color that the room was before, I just took that and I kind of went up a couple notches and found uh, just a, a more neutral color of it. And I found, I guess, another color that was a few notches down, but more in the brown family and not the gold family. And then I took some samples of what was in the carpet and I made, I found a blue that was close to it. Um, and so those are the colors that I went with for the project. So I feel like a nerd talking about these colors, but um, I really feel like they were soothing and paired really nicely. So. We will see. A lot of people were curious why I didn't do white Beltons, and I just thought it would, I thought it would come across really strong to have such a big piece and then such a white statement. I just thought it would be pretty overwhelming. So I just kept the doors and the baseboards molding and stuff, I kept that white. But as far as the built-ins went, we did go with colored built-ins and bookshelves. So I'm excited for you to see how that turned out. Okay, here's a tour. So this is a countertop, and it's gonna be for a coffee bar. I do, I'm doing a white quartz countertop, and I'm doing some detail trim on this. These, um, beneath the two windows, are the little cubby window seats, and they'll be for kids. And then these are eight-foot bookshelves. They're really big, and they're double-sided. And they're gonna go here in the middle. Okay, this is a sitting area, so they're wood floors. And then this will be a navy blue accent wall with a big bundle of ivy going down. Um, and then couches and stuff. And then behind these bookshelves, because bookshelves will be here. And then over here, I'll do a team table and probably a big logo, another window seat, and then this massive built-in. This is like six foot by four foot. It doesn't look like it right now. Um, this will be tiled and all down here will be cabinets. Look at my crown molding. It's so good. And I'll probably do one more team table like right in here. So that's where we're at. It's a great day because we have flooring. It looks super awesome. I love the look that it's giving this room. And in my opinion, it makes it really open up and look a lot bigger than it did before. Um, the cabinetry has all been finished and sanded. The molding looks super nice. So the next thing that's gonna happen is the paint job. So the cabinetry color is drying and I love it. I think it looks really good. The walls haven't yet been painted, so there's gonna be a bit more contrast um, and it'll look a bit different. Tile for the backsplash is going in next, but overall, I am super pleased with how everything is turning out. So there were a few different areas that I was really looking to have in this space. Uh, one was a place for teams to meet, and then I made some more private areas for people to like hold up with a book, and that's in the, the seating area, I guess. So you could kind of mingle, have a coffee, um, enjoy a book with some friends, or just kind of have a place to hang out. The bookshelves are in the middle of the room so that people can browse around. And then there's also just a privacy factor. So the bookshelves separate the two table meeting areas. So it kind of gives those people some privacy and autonomy whenever they're meeting. And then I really wanted to give the kids somewhere special to go. And so that's the idea behind the two window seats. And then we needed a place to uh, serve coffee. And so the coffee bar um, went on one side of the room and then on the other side of the room is a place for some of the other retail items that are there that aren't books. So now we're at the finishing touches of the room and this is really the fun part where you get to just take all of the supplies that you've gathered and mash it up into something that's cool. So we actually hold up um, in here for a few days, built all the furniture, moved it all in one by one, and then just had 
all this installation going on. It was a lot of fun, but also a ton of work. So we took a trip to London, which was one of my favorite places to go. I just loved how there were ivy walls growing everywhere and it just had this booky, cozy kind of feeling, I guess with the weather and the history that's there. Um, and so I was just thinking, if I need to find some artwork that's gonna cover a very big wall, ivy wall an indoor ivy wall. So I bought a ton of fake ivy and we worked on installing it. Okay, staging is in full swing and step one is untangling all this ivy that I bought, which is quite a task. It's everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Over here is the back of the coffee bar and we have started putting together the furniture, but I still have slip covers on all of it since we're still moving it around. I really like how this room is opening up. I definitely feel like this is what I had in my mind, so it's super exciting to see it come to life. All right, this big blue wall is where I'm envisioning the ivy to go, so fingers crossed. All right, we just took the slip covers off of the furniture and I'm giving you a sneak peek. I love how it's looking. I feel like it's the perfect little space to grab a coffee or a book. and the statement piece of the room, all of these bookshelves. Over here is the gathering table, one of them at least, where people will be able to meet, and then the kids sitting area underneath with the window seat, and calibrating an espresso machine, which I have never done before. So one of the last things that uh, we got into was the branding of the space. The location of the bookstore is quite close to the center of the church, and so we went with the name The Center, but gave it the international type spelling. So that's part of the branding, is to kind of have an international flair, but also describe where it is. We also designed the graphic for that, which I feel like is just a really clean branding for it. Um, but just something super simple, The Center at Woods, which is the street or the road that the church is on. Um, and then it's, it describes what's in there, coffee, books, and goods. Um, so there's a lot of fun stuff there. All right guys, the time has come for me to show you the finished product, but I wanna take a quick second and revisit all the places we have been on this design project. Alright, are you ready to see it now? Let's do it. <laughs> 